Welcome back to Channel 37. We are here again in our lovely rainy Amsterdam and we have a really exciting project to share with you. We kind of took the day off because we're building a big boy today. The old hub. <laughs> this is kind of the flagship oscillator by Stefan Tretau from ST Modular. It's a SEM3340 based dual oscillator with five waveforms per oscillator that you can blend in with sliders, kind of similar to the way that our Mini Brute works. Uh, and it has FM and sync modulation and probably a lot of functions that we don't quite know yet until we get our hands on it. That's going to be part of the excitement for us though. The Oberhausen provides us the opportunity to build our sound from scratch. It's really going back to the basics with the oscillator and blending our own waveforms to make something unique. Recently, we've been building a lot of filters and distortion units, which are great for taking a timbre and modifying it. But we're really excited to start from scratch and building something new and specific to our desires. Like many people in the modular world, I am fascinated by texture. I find that it's the textural elements of songs or compositions that are the distinctive element to me that makes it stand out and feel dear to my heart. And so I am excited about how we can implement it in our own composition. Now you may have noticed the big brown box that takes center stage on our table today. This box is filled to the rim with different parts for this oscillator. Um, the first thing, of course, is the front panel and PCB, which we were gifted by Stefan Tretau and Philip Wise from Pusherman. You can get them there. We've decided to build this module from scratch, which means we're going to do the SMD placement as well. All of the other parts come from different sources. We have some from Pusherman. Uh, we have some SEM chips from Electric Druid. We have a few hard to find parts from AliExpress, some parts from our friends at Thonk. It's not a cheap build. I think per unit we invested about 200 euros in just the parts. If you're going by the artistic gallery standard of space equals uh, more value, then you know we're still we're still getting our money's worth. It's really okay. After we install this one, the next thing you'll see us build is a new rack because we're out of space. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Stefan Tretau. <laughs> the module is so complex and documentation on the internet is relatively sparse, so we hope to tell you more about it after we've built it and played around with it a little bit. So join our review after the build video. So this is the team for this project. On the left we have Lily. Mm -hmm. She will be womaning the laptop to use the iBomb. And on the right we have Sander from Melodio. I started getting into modular and DIY for about like two, two and a half years ago. Once I was selling uh, a case, I met Casper. And mm. uh, That's right. We kept in touch and became friends and he also joined in into the DIY uh, stuff. And now we're building this overhouse and this dual complex oscillator together and uh, it's gonna be great. Here, this is the eye bomb. It's really nice. So it shows you where the parts are placed. Yeah. So you can tell us like top left or wherever. So Casper was um, telling me, oh, I was able to find the eye bomb, but I'm not used to hearing the acronym. So I was like feverishly Googling and then I, I got all these articles about how to make your own bomb and I was like, oh my god, do I even know this man? So we'll just start with the resistors, I think. You don't want to do the chips first? Uh, no, because we're going to do SMD placement, right? So we yeah. uh, just bake the whole thing in one go. Mm -hmm. yeah. The first step is to use a syringe of solder paste to apply a tiny dot of solder paste to all of the pads for passive components. For the ICs, apply a thin line of paste near the outside of the footprint on both sides. Because there are over 450 parts in this build, we will not name each part individually. Instead, we will show you how to use the Interactive Bill of Materials, or eyeball. Go to the ST Modular GitHub profile. Then open the Eurorack repository. This contains all of Stefan Tretau's Eurorack modules including the Oberhausen. Click on the green code button and download a zip for the repository. Then extract the zip. Go to the Oberhausen folder. Inside there are two files that you need. 
first is the Oberhausen Bill of Materials. This is the file that you use to order parts for your build. Here you will see a complete list of all the parts that you need to place, sorted by value. Let's start with the 300R resistors. Their numbers are R43, R148 and R204. The second file that you need to open is the iBOM. Open the iBOM folder and then the iBOM file. Now you see a schematic overview of the top of the PCB and the bottom of the PCB. Let's fill out the value of the first resistor, R43. If we hover over the part number, we see it highlighted approximately in the middle of the board. There you will find a footprint labeled R43. Place the resistor on that footprint. Do this for all of the labeled parts in the bill of materials. To do this efficiently, it's helpful to have a friend look up the part numbers in the eyeball. First, place all of the passive components, starting with the resistors. Then, the ceramic capacitors. Here's a close-up of how to place an SMD part. Place all the remaining parts, like diodes and transistors. Then, electrolytic capacitors, all of the SMD trim pots, and finally the op amps and other ICs. Assure that the first pin is correctly aligned. ICs have different markings illustrated in this picture to aid their placement. Reflow the solder paste with hot air, making sure to cover all of the board and without remaining too long in one place. We're using tweezers to make minor corrections in placement and to remove solder bridges. You may have to touch up your work with a soldering iron afterwards. Now for the hand soldering. First solder the LED, put some solder on one pad, slide the LED into place, then solder the other side and finally reflow both sides. Place a 100k trimmer and two 10k trimmers. Solder these into place. Now place the power header, hold it in place with some foam, and solder the first corner pin. Make sure the header is flush with the board, and then solder the remaining pins. Next up are the SEM 3340 chips. Solder a corner pin, ensure correct alignment, then solder the remaining pins. Next up are the two polystyrene capacitors. Solder these in place from the top. On the front of the PCB, place two 10K trimmers for the volt per octave and two 1 amp for the gain. Place four LEDs. Now, place the eight slide pots. Place the 50K dual gang pot, 600K pots. 150k pot, 900k pots. Twenty-one jack sockets. Inserting the top connector at an angle helps keep them in place. One DPDT switch. Four SPDT on-on switches. Five SPDT on-off-on switches. Now place the front panel making sure all the pieces slot into their respective holes. This is going to take a while. Use a few nuts to keep the front panel in place. Cover the holes of the LEDs and the trim pots with sticky tape to align them with the front panel. Note that we mistakenly soldered the trim pots already. Now solder all of the control hardware. It's time to test your module. Ours sounded more like a Benjolin, so we decided to call in some help 
for my friend Stein at This Is Not Rogan Science. There is iets niet goed hierbij. He helped us debug the module. What do you do when you just fried your last SMD diode, Stein? <laughs> you take the biggest one you can find and you cut it into shape. Note that it was Casper's fault that the diode blew. Look at this tiny, almost SMD diode. <laughs> okay, what's the problem? Your Oberhausen is done. Turn on the party lights by adjusting the LED trim pot. Let's review our DIY Oberhausen in my DIY Lederhosen. Let's dive straight into our categories. Let's start with face. What do you think, Casper? I think all of Stefan Tretau's modules have a really nice aesthetic. He posted recently on his Instagram this massive beast of a modular synthesizer with all of his modules. Mm -hmm. It looks good. It makes us want more of them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to rate it 10 for face. Yeah, I have to agree. I like the, the layout of the, the slide potentiometers under these big knobs. I'm kind of a fanatic for slide potentiometers. It just makes me feel like the whole experience is more interactive and tactile. I like it. The second category is Crave. How much do we want it? Lily. Well, um, the module itself is gigantic. But I have to say, it was well worth making the space in our in our rack because the sounds that this thing can produce are incredible. As I came in this afternoon, as Casper was crafting some music, I was immediately thrown onto the floor in a meditative uh, trance-like state, enjoying so much what he was producing. So, yeah, absolutely 10 out of 10. It's just really nice to have a dual oscillator in Euro rack uh, where you don't always have this kind of paraphony. For the demo, we detuned both oscillators a little bit and then used control voltage to ping pong between them, which creates a really nice effect. The main reason we wanted the Oberhausen is because it's a dedicated dual SEM3340 oscillator. It has lots of hands-on control, so you can really dial in the kind of sound that you want and tons of modulation options. So it can sound freaky, it can sound beautiful, many different options. So based on this, we really wanted it. The next category is groove. Is it groovy? It is very groovy. All of the sounds in the demo were generated with the Oberhausen. Pads, percussion, bass and lead. And the sound is diverse enough to capture the attention through the entire piece. The Oberhausen has so many internal modulation options that it can create a diversity of textures. There are only two things that I would have liked to see in this oscillator. One is CV control over the levels of the different wave shapes. This would really help in crafting slowly morphing atmospheric patches. And the second thing that I would have liked to see is that instead of normalizing the output of each of the wave shapes to each individual oscillator output and then to the joint output, multiplying the signal of each of the wave shapes so that you can access it at all of these outputs. The final category is noob. How easy is it to build? What do you think, Lily? I wouldn't say it's completely noob friendly. It's an incredibly involved process. So if you're patient and you have excellent fine motor skills, this is for you. It's very immersive. It's just an absolutely enormous module with tons of SMD. So you have to be really precise and organized in the process. One of the challenges that we encountered was that after placing all of the parts, we found that we actually could not use our beloved pan baking method. It was simply too large. So we uh, reverted to the hot air method, which was also okay. Um, however, you know, there's, with so many parts, there's likely that a few little things will go wrong. So we ended up having to do some troubleshooting eventually it worked. The calibration process was also extremely extensive and searching guidance online we actually came up with um, very few tools to aid so we decided to record a detailed calibration video that we will release next week so stay tuned. Looking back I honestly think that we were sufficiently equipped to build this module independently but because it's so big in scope we got a little freaked out when it didn't immediately work when we first plugged it in. So we called on our helpline Stein from This Is Not Rocket Science. Thank you for taking the time out to help us debug the module. It turns out that there were only like one or two short circuits and once those were debugged the module worked just fine. 
We've learned from this that we really can't expect instant gratification and it's really worth it to roll up your sleeves and be in it for the long haul with these projects. And we know how to debug problems like this. So we should have just trusted the process, broken out our multimeter and oscilloscope, uh, check for shorts on all of the parts, check for correct orientation on polarized parts, and that would have gotten us through that tight spot. We also learned a few things in the process of building this module. The first, as Lily mentioned, is that it was too big for the pan baking method and we had to use hot air to solder it. I'm not a big fan of hot air. I think it unnecessarily heats up the parts. You have to be really precise about hitting all of the different spots. You have to get your airflow just right so that you don't launch the parts off the PCB. It's a little tricky. So probably in the future, if I had to solder such a big module, I would just use hand soldering. The second thing we learned is that the trim pots on the front side of the panel are supposed to protrude through the faceplate. Now, because we had soldered them in place before mounting the faceplate, their trimmers were not perfectly aligned with the front panel. So what I would recommend to you is just placing those trim pots, just like all of the other control hardware, and then placing the front panel before soldering them in place. That way you would get the perfect alignment with the holes on the front panel. That was our review of the Oberhausen. We really hope you enjoyed. And we just want to remind you that this channel is not monetized, so it really helps us out if you can like and subscribe. And please stay tuned for our next video, which is the calibration of the Oberhausen. See you next time. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>